Peter Garsden was a young solicitor when he took the phone call that changed his life. In June 1994, an old client of mine rang me up and told me he'd been interviewed by Warrington Police uh, because he was a victim of child abuse at a children's home. Peter took up his case and it led to a decades-long quest for justice. Over the years, more and more victims came forward until there were 800 claimants. And, and the cases grew and grew and grew. My first client's case was one of 120 at this children's home in Warrington. Um, and it, it lasted about 10 years before it was settled because the defendants were challenging everything. Finally, 15 years after that first phone call, Peter won five million pounds in damages for victims. Peter was passionate about the subject um, because he was entering new territory where laws hadn't been in place to help those victims. And I think Peter was pretty determined to campaign and lobby the government to change things so that actually those victims could be helped. And I think he was quite alone in the early days. There were many people in that area of law and he, he, he definitely saw it as a campaign and I think he still does. Away from his pioneering work, Peter and his wife also fostered 18 children. Fostering was my wife's initiative. She saw me campaigning very hard uh, for victims of child abuse and she wanted to do something that made a difference. But we, uh, we both decided it was a very worthwhile thing to do. And although I was fighting legal cases and campaigning hard about issues, I wasn't actually getting my hands dirty and I wasn't helping real um, uh, human beings heal. Well, I think because Peter was dealing with adults who'd been abused in childhood and now they were in the 30s, 40s, 50s, um, he didn't see them as children. That he was dealing with grown-up people. So I think to come home and have those children who were affected in the same way and see them as children, I think probably gave him a better perspective than it would for a lot of people, especially lawyers in his position, because he saw that neglect and that abuse firsthand from the beginning at the sharp end. Peter has become a national leader in fighting for justice and founded the Association of Child Abuse Lawyers, helping to establish guidelines for helping victims through the legal process. We've created numerous precedents that have gone all the way to the Supreme Court, which have founded the basis for claimants and victims and survivors now who are going through the legal process. He's always there. He's not ego-driven. He genuinely cares about preventing child sexual abuse and totally understands the harm that it does. He has a passion to, to prevent this and to do the best he possibly can for the people that are struggling, who have been failed in the courts. It, it's, it's thousands of cases that I, I, we've dealt with uh, as a firm. I, I'm often surprised how complimentary people are of what we have done for them because we take them through a healing process, from crisis to some sort of acceptance. Closure is an, an, is an illusion, that will never happen. But we take them uh, from um, the uh, abuse from memories being overwhelming to a state where it's a, a lesser part of their life uh, and the disclosure can help them move on with their lives. And I don't think he would ever stop and I still think that, until those laws are changed and those people are protected and they get justice, because that's what it's about, really. Peter's passionate about putting things in place, putting laws in place and changing them, just to, just to make sure that people get the justice they need. Well, listen, I understand that you've had um, a recent diagnosis of autism, is that correct? And that must make you, I mean, even prouder of, of what you've achieved. Well, you know, autism comes in all shapes and sizes. It was a big shock to me to be diagnosed with autism in 2019. But actually, when I was diagnosed, they said to me it was probably uh, the best job I could have. Because uh, the thing about autism is you think in boxes. And, you know, I, I might deal with something very upsetting, but I can put it somewhere in my brain and, and deal with it in a structural way and see it as a legal problem rather than what might appear to be an overwhelming emotional issue. Mm. So uh, it's actually a strength. Peter, please welcome Pride of Manchester judge and MP Lisa Nandy and presenter and documentary maker Christine McGuinness. <laughs> Peter.
Peter is different because from the day that that young man walked into his office as a young solicitor, he saw the human being in front of him and he cared enough to say, your fight is my fight and you will never, ever walk alone. When I was asked to give out this award, I said no straight away. I said, absolutely not. I am not getting back on stage. I can't do it. And then they sent me Peter's story. Um, as well as being autistic, I was a child abuse victim. Um, so I just want to give you a very, very personal thank you for what you do and how much it means to all of the victims. And on behalf of everyone in this room, congratulations. You're an incredible person and just don't stop doing what you're doing. I think you're amazing.